your whole life, society tells you like, oh, be a man and you're strong and you're tough and margaritas are gay. You know, like, you know, you don't grow up thinking that's the way you are. When you're a kid, you just do, you just act. And then somewhere along the line, everyone loses that. Over the past few generations, filmmakers have manipulated the documentary form as a way of creatively educating audiences about real-life events, people, or factual information in entertaining ways. However, others also see the documentary medium as a powerful vehicle for therapy. As filmmakers and social actors have attempted to disclose their unspoken painful truths to the world as a means of unburdening themselves. In the case of Bing Lu's 2018 documentary Minding the Gap, the film provides a small group of young skateboarders from Rockford, Illinois, a platform to talk about their hidden traumas. As they unpack a shared history of abuse, they also discover the struggles of their fleeting youth, the ills of toxic masculinity, and the solace or escape they each found in skateboarding. Bing Lu opts to subvert the traditional documentary film styles of the past and blends together various documentary film modes to capture the uniquely personal accounts of his group of friends who over the past 12 years remain silent on their unspoken connection of domestic violence and the lingering effects that carried over into their adulthood. Minding the Gap is anything but an ordinary skate film. Bing Lu's documentary dives into the separate lives of three teens and exposes a commonality of themes that deal with life experiences such as domestic violence, identity, and family relationships, and how they cope with their shared traumas. As Bing, Zach, and Kier find their place as young adults, Bing's grainy home footage captures similarities between them. Bing saw the yearning to break out, to leave the town that kept putting them down, the heartbreak, and the nuclear family falling apart. These skateboarders come from abusive households, and their trauma unites them in a form of skateboarding. Domestic violence imposes the teens for years, being harshly disciplined from Bing's stepfather and Kier's dad. Zach falls into this cycle of abuse and violence as he and Nina expect their baby boy. Soon things fall apart, going from snarky remarks to throwing hands. Bing confronts both Zach and Nina and are afraid of taking accountability for the cycles of violence they allowed themselves to go through. For many years, they had this unspoken commonality that extends far beyond just skateboarding, but they thought it was just a part of their personal adolescent experience. Like, skateboarding meant more to you than just being cool and having friends. Like, it was your thing to like, get away. It was kind of a life or death thing. Skateboarding to them was something that helped them cope and was a release from the frustrations they were dealing with in their home environments. The film lets the suppressed trauma linger to the audience during these heavy dialogues to show how skateboarding was an escape for the actors as well as a way to reflect on the social actors and what they have to say. Bing confesses to Kier that he always saw himself in him because of the things they've gone through. Jasper Caspian Yang from the New York Times writes, Lou ultimately rejects the idea of journalistic distance between a documentary filmmaker and his subjects. Once he fully comprehends that Kier and Zach are serving as stand-ins for his own trauma, he feels compelled to join them on the other side of the lens. Bing sits down to interview his mother, and he asks her why she stayed with the man who would beat them so regularly. The audience sees his mother's guilty expression. The camera stands in to confront and capture her face and shaky voice. It forces not only his mother, but Zach and Kier to confront their past, present, and future in order to move forward and grow from the things they lived through. What you're looking at right now is the use of poetic mode in Minding the Gap. The filmmaker uses the long skating shots to transition from one story to another, or in the case of this film, from an uncomfortable topic to the next one. This technique is used to help the viewer emotionally transition to the next topic. In this clip, 
the filmmaker adopted poetic and observatory mode styles to turn it into emotional realism. This emotional realism transforms the way the viewer engages with the film and the social actor's point of view. Next, we're going to look at the forms of documentary style that make up the aesthetic and narratory structure of the film. The filmmaker uses observatory, expository, and participatory modes to tell the stories. In this section of the video essay, we're going to look at the ways the filmmaker makes use of observatory and expository modes during the interviews, where he uses composition of archival footage and editing techniques that together create a coherent sense of storyline based on the time and space the scenes are taking place. During the interviews, the expository and observatory modes of documentary intertwine, helping the viewer understand the social actor's point of view. The expository style is not only when the social actors are exposed to talk about their trauma and personal experience, but also the footage that has been recorded throughout the years. I got disciplined and I wasn't able to skate for a while. How did you get disciplined? Uh, I mean, well, they call it child abuse now, but it's not really a child. <laughs> um, First, during this process, the filmmaker uses close-ups exposing the psychological realism and the inner state of the social actors throughout the interviews that tend to hold close-ups longer than usual. In the second part of this process, the filmmaker just opposes the evidence of archival footage that illustrates and exposes the social actors' point of view, which gives meaning to their ideologies shaping the story of each actor and the aesthetic structure of the film. This technique brings the viewers closer and takes them along the social actor's journey. Evidentiary editing exposes the discomfort the actors feel while talking about sensitive topics such as child abuse and the case of Kier. The meaning of these images examines psychological realism. It's just really difficult to, for me to explain right now. The third aspect of narration are the tools the filmmaker utilized to bring the film to life, creating a link between skating culture and filmmaking, by documenting the life of these young people on a personal level. With these wide lenses, camera, sound, location, and skateboarding skills, the filmmaker was able to capture the life of his group of friends and their ability to skateboard, creating a documentary that exposes the struggle of this subculture. The camera became an extension of the group to the point where they became unaware of its process. As the person holding the camera, you get treated a little differently. There's just this slight little social acceptance that you get from it, and there's power in that. If the documentary film is the creative treatment of actualities, Bing blends together Bill Nichols' various modes of documentary to represent a unique personal portrait of his group of friends that found escape from their abusive households through skateboarding. Minding the Gap takes a page out of the observatory mode, as Bing often becomes a fly-on-the-wall cameraman, capturing events as they unfold in front of the camera. Bing's years of friendship amongst his friends grant him access to their personal private lives in a way other documentary journalists wouldn't normally have access to. His friends become accustomed to the presence of his camera to the point where they can just let their guard down around him. In moments of tension, such as when Zach and Nina are arguing, he gives the social actors enough space while coming from a curious, non-judgmental perspective. Considering it was the first time Zach and Kier spoke about their suppressed burdens, they felt comfortable enough to disclose their hardships to Bing as he's filmed them over the course of 10 years. What kind of filming are we doing? The kind where I pretend you're not there or the other kind? The other kind. <clears throat> where we talk the whole time. <laughs> While Minding the Gap often uses several instances of the unobtrusive fly-on-the-wall approach to the documentary, Bing also incorporates elements of the participatory mode as he interacts with the social actors behind and in front of the camera. He withholds compromising personal information that would directly affect not only his relationship with his friends, but also the film's overall narrative. Bing doesn't just address his friends in order to advance their personal stories, he becomes just as much of a social actor throughout the film as them. It's almost like 
free therapy. <laughs> yeah. I'm making this film because I was physically disciplined by my stepfather. You know, it didn't make sense to me. And I saw myself in your own story. Minding the Gap is also steeped in performance mode characteristics, as Bing doesn't just ask his friends and family about their perspectives and experiences growing up, but becomes an integral part of why they're telling their stories. He applies his own subjectivity as a framework for what the social actors talk about, especially considering he's known them for over a decade. Bing performs on camera as a skateboarder and as a social actor, but his connection with his friends reflect his own personal exploration of trauma. For example, the interview Bing has with his mother is at the heart of the film, but his authorial touch is felt throughout the entirety of the documentary. We observe Bing as he pieces together the traumatic similarities he has with his friends, such as the parallels of abuse between Zach and Nina with those between his own stepfather and mom, and also how Kier's relationship with his father resembles Bing's own abusive upbringing. What makes Minding the Gap such a unique combination of the documentary modes is the way in which the film is formed in the post-production stage. By fusing together 12 years of archival footage with five years of interviews, Bing was able to work out what his film would be about while in the editing room, as his careful construction of content would be contextualized over time upon reflection. Bing recognized how trauma shaped who they are now and chose to frequently cross the fourth wall in order to address the audience directly. Bing Lu's Minding the Gap demonstrates how the medium of cinema can be utilized as an effective approach to detailing the physical and mental states of humans struggling with interpersonal demons. Bing represents the type of friend that documents your life on camera, just as you're starting to realize who you are, but at the same time discovers himself in the process as he reflects on years of footage he's captured over time. Reminiscent of skateboarders who navigate urban streets, sometimes with no destination in mind except for a desire to escape their troubled lives, sometimes we find out where we're going when we're just along for the ride. This documentary isn't a film about skateboarding, but about how a group of friends attempt to manage their own burden of trauma through their shared love of skateboarding. While dealing with such heavy retrospective themes of painful pasts, the film finds ways to weave together emotional high points with the comfort of skateboarding in a very organic manner. It is in those moments of blissful escape that we see the happiness in the social actors, and we, the audience, are able to reflect on our own lives.